everybody, welcome back. We are gearing up for the holidays. Absolutely. And I bet you are too, because it's, you know, it's coming soon. Thanksgiving, right around the corner, and right yep. after that, Christmas. And, and New Year's. Yep, that's right. Um, but we are thinking, um, what goes better for Thanksgiving and Christmas than a pie? Oh, I mean, yeah. I'll tell you what, if you can learn how to make a decent pie, you are in like Flynn for the holidays. <laughs> Everybody wants you to bring a pie. Let me tell you, it's true. Right, it's right. true. Bring a pie. So anyway, um, we're, you, you want to tell them what we're going to make? Well, this is not the first time you've seen apples and butternut squash together on a table in one of our videos. So we figured since they complemented each other so well in the pork roulade, that we would let them complement each other again in a dessert this time. However, we're not going to use the onions. No, no, not, no not, not, not this time. But not um, this time. I think that might come down the road, maybe with a little Asiago cheese. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. So, but that's we'll deal with that later. <laughs> Let's talk holidays here. Everybody thinks of apple pie and pumpkin pie when we think of the holidays, and I'm not a big pumpkin pie lover. Sorry, it doesn't have the best texture. So. I made a sweet potato pie one time and that was awesome. Oh, they're awesome. Sweet potato pie is excellent. So we're going to go a step beyond that. I also made a butternut squash pie. Oh my God, every bit is good. Very, sweet very potato good. Pie. Very good. So we're going to make a butternut squash pie, but we're also going to incorporate it with an apple pie. So we're going to make kind of like two pies in one because what do you do on the holidays? You want pie? You got apple pie? You got pumpkin pie? You can't decide between either. What right. do you do? Small piece of each. Little piece of apple, little piece of pumpkin. And what do you do? Well, you end up eating them together anyway. They kind of get right. mixed together. You know, well, if you're like a normal person. If you're like me, just say, oh, pumpkin, please. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so so we're going to make a pie that incorporates both. It's going to be apple and pumpkin, or, or apple and butternut squash all in the same pie. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, we're going to make it easy, too, because... Let's be honest, when it comes around to the holidays, if you're the one who does most of the cooking for your family, and maybe not, a lot of big families or just even small families, everybody makes something. Everybody is in charge of bringing something, but right. um, I've done a lot of holidays all on my own. I'm not here recently, but I've done them all on my own where I made everything. And pies, it takes a lot of time. Um, not necessarily just to make the pie, but you're rolling out your crust and oh my God, and everybody is nervous about a crust. And I've got two no fail pie crust recipes that we'll show you later on, but I'm not going to get into that right now because I know you are pressed for time. Right. Especially because, there's a lot of families that actually end up having two holiday exactly, meals, right? Exactly. One for their immediate family and then they go to another one with the big or, family. Yeah, or so. the mom, your, your side of the family, their side of the family, and you've got to make something not just for your family, but then for your side of the family and their side of the family. Right. And, and everybody's stressed for time. And, and I'll be honest, this is, this is uh, like Pils Pils Pillsbury Ready Crust or whatever they call them. It's bought pie crust. So I'm going to use that today because there really is nothing wrong with this. I do like homemade crust a little bit better. Uh, not necessarily, honestly, my regular pie crust that's like this. I think this is every bit as good. Um, but a lard crust, you can't beat it. Oh, no. And I would normally use a lard crust for this type of pie. A single crust pie, I usually do a lard crust. But we'll get into that maybe with a coconut cream or a banana cream. Y'all yeah. comment. Y'all comment and tell us what you want to see more. Right. Banana cream, coconut cream, either one of them. Or, or maybe a rhubarb pie next year. Yeah, or a rhubarb pie. But mm. we're, we're winter, you know, cream pies. Really right, good. yeah. So, but Absolutely. We're, we're going to make it easy. And this is uh, a recipe for a pumpkin pie, which I'm just using a standard pumpkin pie recipe, and I'm going to use butternut squash instead. And it has got to be the easiest pumpkin pie recipe ever. And I got it from my dad. And we were here in my dad's kitchen. Our dad's yes, kitchen. we are. We are. This is our home. This is where we grew up as kids from the time that... Where we, where we were taught see, all of our culinary skills yeah. by our mother. Well, and Grandma's house is already sold, <laughs> right, right. so we can't show you Grandma's house, but this is where it all began. I was 11 and you were 13. He wasn't quite 14. I was 11 and he wasn't quite 14 when we moved in here. So mm -hmm. it's always been home and Dad's going to join us here a little later, probably once the pie is done. So he might be our taste tester today. He might be. He <laughs> might be. Oh, and one other thing. If you're curious, if you watched the fireside chat video and you're wondering, the answer is yes. 
some of the seeds from the squash will be saved and planted. Yes, they'll be saved and planted, and I probably will also save the rest of them and soak them in salt water and roast them. Now because. you're talking. They are just so good. <laughs> and, and, and if anyone thinks that it's odd that we're making pumpkin pie out of butternut squash, pumpkin is a squash. Yes, it is. And, and this is actually the superior vegetable to use for a pie as far as I'm concerned. And if you make a butternut squash pie, <clears throat> I don't think you're gonna eat pumpkin pie again. At least not made with that canned pumpkin that is not good to begin with. But, <laughs> no. but it's so much easier than, uh, you know, finding pie pumpkins isn't easy. And these butternut squash will keep in cold storage. You put them in your basement where it's dry and it's, I mean, where it's, where it's dark and it's a little dry. You don't want it super dry. Basements are perfect. Any basement. If you don't have a dehumidifier running all the time, it's great. And they'll keep for months and months. Right. This is all the way through till next summer. This is it. Yes, this is it. And for the people in Canada, I actually watched a video. Um, oh, I forget who it was, but they had something called like a Canadian crookneck squash or something. And it's so much like a butternut squash. It isn't funny, but its neck is really skinny and long. But it's basically the same, and they keep just the same. So if I don't know why you wouldn't have butternut squash in Canada, I imagine they do. But um. Either is fine. Any kind of a squash like this, and I haven't gone as far as to try acorn, but I might do that. I might actually do that. It'd be with, worth a shot. I might do the acorn with the onions and um, and the Asiago cheese. Yeah, yeah. I think so. So we're gonna get going here in a second, and you will not want to miss this because it is delectable. By the way, guys, before we leave for the intro, give us a thumbs up if you would. It helps the channel out a lot. It we sure does. You. And we do appreciate it, every bit. Let's get cooking. Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna start. Very first thing you wanna do is you wanna get this butternut squash cleaned and cooking. So I'm gonna do it for you. For those of you that didn't see our pork roulade, what we do is we're gonna cut off the top here, and then we're gonna cut off the bottom, just the very bottom. I'm going to stand it on end. See, cutting off that bottom gives us a flat spot to set it. And we're going to go straight down through the center of this. And you want to have a long enough bladed knife that you can keep your fingers out here. Where if when you go through it, you're not going to cut them. The more season the squash gets, the harder this outside rind gets. So it'll get harder and harder to cut through. So you make it later in the year, it's going to be a little more difficult to get through. This is just like you would do a pumpkin or honestly um, a cantaloupe. It's the same way. Right. You're gonna take the seeds out. So Spaghetti we're just gonna squash. we're gonna take our spoon in here and we're gonna and we're gonna scoop and we're gonna scoop these seeds into this bowl, which we're gonna use as our garbage bowl. Now normally, um, I don't know what, what other people do, but normally we take this and we would throw this in the compost pile. And boy, tomato seeds, squash seeds, every year you get plants coming up out of the compost pile. Oh, which is, oh, which are the best. They are the best. Some of the best tomatoes come right out of the compost pile. So you have the stringy stuff that's in here with the seeds. Now we're gonna pick the, some of these seeds off and we're gonna save them and we're gonna save some to plant and roast some. And we'll go into the saving seeds for planting and explain that a little bit, what you need to do. Now, tomato seeds are a little different, but squash seeds are really easy. But I wanna show you, get a close up on this, Gino. Well, hold on, one second. Let me do this other one so you can see the difference. I'm just gonna scoop these seeds out of here like this, like you would, like some people might do. And I'm gonna show you what you don't wanna leave. Okay, the seeds are now out of here. Okay. You know, take a shot of both of these. Okay, one is ready to cook, one is not. You don't wanna leave that in there. It's really, really fibrous, and it's just gonna be nasty. So you need to take that, it's not that difficult. You just need to take your spoon, it's just a regular serving spoon, and you just need to slice down around the side of it, and once you get it, start to get it loose, you can get right underneath it, and it just scrapes out with a spoon. Take the point, scrape down a little bit, 
It's really, really easy. But if you've ever cleaned a cantaloupe, you know how nasty that is. Look in here. Can you get close on this, Gio? I'm already close. Okay, look, see this? This is where the difference is. Do you see how that pulls out of there? That's because this is super fibrous and super stringy and you do not want that in a pie or anything else you make with squash. So make sure that you get that cleaned out of there. It's very, very important or you're not gonna be happy with, with your results in whatever it is that you make. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to cook this. <laughs> okay, guys, I told you that we were gonna make it easy because time is always an issue during the holidays. So normally what I would do is I would take this and I would take the two halves of them, put them down on a cookie sheet, put just a little bit of water in the bottom of the cookie sheet, loosely tent it with foil, just lay a piece of foil over the top of it, put it in a 350 degree oven for about an hour. And that works awesome. However, time is an issue because it's the holidays. So we're gonna use the microwave, which I normally don't use the microwave, um, just because I don't think microwaves are good. But So I cut up these pieces and arrange them in this baking dish, in this casserole dish, and I put just a drizzle of water in here. There is moisture in here on its own, but while it's heating, I don't want it to dry out and the steam will help. You don't wanna to add too much water because that will make your squash watery, which will make your pie watery. So just a little shot of water, just about this much in a little cup. You know, you're talking about not even an eighth of a cup of water in here. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe three quarters of a coffee scoop of water in the bottom, just a little. And we're gonna put this in the microwave and I'm gonna put it in there on 40% because I find that 40% cooks things best in the microwave without overcooking the edges. So we're gonna put it in there at 40% and I'm gonna put it in there for 10 minutes and I'm gonna check it. And it's probably gonna take longer than that. However, in an oven, it takes a good hour. So we're gonna expedite this and make it fast because time is an issue. Okay, you guys, we had um, five large apples. They actually are an apple called Evercrisp, which is kind of like a honey crisp. It's on, it's kind of like a new apple. About 10 years ago, it was an experimental apple. We're here in the Midwest, we're in Illinois. And um, an orchard, a local orchard, actually had these trees planted down the road from where we live. And they were experimental and they were testing, a, I forget who it was out in Iowa actually did a test on them. But this apple, oh my God. This apple, as far as I'm concerned, is the most awesome all around apple there is. It's great for eating, it cooks well. I already used it in a pie. It's just unbelievable. And I know there are people that think Randy Smith is the only way to go as far as a pie goes. I totally disagree. To me, an apple pie is supposed to be warm. It's not supposed to be tart and chunky and hard and crispy. It's supposed to be just layers of thinly sliced apples that just stack together and make a super dense, thick, warm, vanilla, comforting apple pie. So we're using these, they're Evercrisp. If you find Evercrisp in your supermarket or at a um, local orchard, make sure you pick a couple up and try them. They're unbelievable. Best tasting apple out there right now as far as I'm concerned. So we're gonna slice these up and I want you to see, when I say thin, Gino, can you come in here on this? I'm already you ready. could probably do this in a food processor. I don't do it because you don't get, you know, you can't control how they sit in there. But I want thin, thin, thin slices. You know, nothing, what nothing. Is that, what thick. is that about nickel thick? Like we like. <laughs> That's funny. I guess everything seems to be nickel thick, and it doesn't matter if some get a little thicker or some get a little thinner. You know, we are human. We're not, we're not perfect. But um, you're just gonna take these and and slice them up with a with, with a paring knife, and. We'll come back with you after I do the rest of these because you don't need to see me slice all these apples, but. Okay, so we cut up, sliced up all of our apples and I measured them when we did it. You know, I can't tell you five apples, four apples, six apples. It all depends because every apple is a different size. And these were big, so it's okay. They'll eat well anyway. So we only use four because they're pretty large, but what you want is six cups of sliced apples. So we measured them out and we're gonna dump these in this pot here with, well, we got two escapees here, with one cup of sugar. And I forgot my sugar. Huh. And this is for two pies, right, Les? We're gonna make two pies out of this because 
What we're doing is we're making basically an apple pie filling and a pumpkin pie filling, and we're gonna make two apple pumpkin pies. So I'm gonna take the sugar and drizzle it over the top of these apples, and I'm just gonna let this sit here for a while, and then we're gonna give it a stir. But I'm gonna shake it down in there because our pot is kind of small. So we're gonna get that shook down in there to get over the top of those apples, and what will happen is it will start to macerate. It will draw the juice out of the apples, and it will make the apples wilt. Kind of like when you put salt on lettuce. So we're gonna let this sit there for a little bit. I'm gonna put those in a Ziploc bag, and we'll be back with you, because we are gonna take this and put this on a stove, and we're gonna cook this. And we're gonna cook these apples down until they're most of the way done. And the reason why we're gonna do that, we'll do that after they draw the juice. The reason why we're gonna do that is because the pumpkin will cook faster than the apples. And if we put the apples in the bottom, they will not be done and we want them done. So we'll be back. Okay, so we have uh, let these out the whole time from the refrigerator the whole time while we were getting everything ready. And our squash is still cooking. And just to make a note, it does take high for the squash to get done <laughs> in a microwave. I really had no idea because I haven't cooked. Uh, it may be because that microwave. butternut squash is so hard around the Possibly, outside. or it's just because we have so much in there is, as well. But anyway, so we're going to take our pie crust, and we're not going to get real fancy with this because I know from doing this before, this deep dish pie crust, this pie crust, I don't have to roll it out anymore or anything. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to lay it in here and center it up. And then we're going to press it down. And these are easy to work with. Press it down. We're going to put it in there like that. And I'm going to go around here with my finger. Oops, look at that. Okay, with my finger and make sure that this is down against the edges everywhere and that I don't have a big air bubble here in the center. Now we are not pre-baking this crust before we put it in the oven. So I'm just going to take this edge here and I'm going to turn it under just a hair just to make a little bit of a thicker crust at the top. And I don't want to lose too much because we're going to have this pretty dang full when we get done. Pretty pretty similar to what you did with the pizza crust in the Dutch oven yes. pizza. Yes. Now if we have extra pumpkin, which is going in last on top of the apples, if we have extra pumpkin pie filling, which is actually going to be butternut pie filling, if we have extra, we're going to, we, we can take that and we can pour it in custard cups or another little container and you don't even need a crust to bake it. You can take it in there, put it in there and put it in the oven right alongside of it and bake it. It'll get done faster because it's going to be a smaller capacity but you don't have to waste that. You know, we were always waste not want not, so we're not yeah, exactly. wasting anything. So. You know, there's few smells that scream the holidays to me than pies or bread. I know, I, apple bread. pie, pumpkin pie, oh, they all smell awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around here and I'm, I'm just, gonna, just gonna pinch these. Everybody has a different way they wanna do things. I normally make a double crusted pie, so I'm kind of at a loss exactly how to do this, but I think I'm just going to use one finger against my thumb. It seems like it works best. Normally I do it like this, but it's double crust, so it doesn't matter. You're just making it look pretty. It would really be nice if you had the time and you were making your own dough and you would have a little extra. It would be nice if you had some fall leaf cookie cutters to cut them out and then take those. I'm gonna squeeze that air bubble out. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a little bubble here. I'm gonna squeeze that out. And you could go around this with it. So this crust is almost done. See in here how when I crimped that, this pulled away from the side. We wanna push that back out to the side. We want everything to be out to the side. We don't want any air between our pie plate and our crust. So gently, and if you use these pie crusts, you don't have to be quite as gentle as if you're making a homemade one, but just push those back to the outside. Okay, 
The only other thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna cut off a piece of butter and we're gonna rub butter on this and I've got my butter right over here. Sorry about that. And the reason why I do this is because we're putting apple pie filling in the bottom of the pie crust. Normally on my apple pie, I will take a couple of pats of butter and put it on top of the apples. Put it on top of the apples. This is not real warm. So I was hoping I could get it to smash down, but it's not. On top of the apples and it melts down and it goes into the bottom and it helps your crust not get soggy. Nobody likes a soggy crust. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna rub this crust with this butter and that will right away create a film. And when our apple pie filling goes in there, it's gonna to have to be cooled. So let me melt my butter a little bit with my hands. And we're just gonna rub oh, this around. So it works similar to the olive oil on the pizza crust. Exactly, exactly. Yes, you, 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 you want to put a barrier between that or it's not gonna get, there's nothing there to help it get crisp besides on the inside. On the outside, there's oil in the crust, which will help it crisp up, but this really makes a difference. And over the top of this, we're gonna put just a sprinkling of flour because we're not adding flour into our apples. We're cooking them in the sugar until they get thick. So we're gonna cook them in the sugar until they get thick, and we're gonna add our cinnamon and our vanilla last. And the reason why I'm adding the cinnamon last is because I want as much liquid in there as possible so it distributes evenly amongst the apples. And the reason why I'm adding the vanilla last is because vanilla extract is um, alcohol based. It's vanilla beans that have been soaked in alcohol. You can make your own like with vodka, with a good vodka that doesn't have a lot of flavoring. And you soak the vanilla beans in there. Grandma did it when we were kids and she put it underneath the sink in a, in a dark spot and she let it sit there for, I want to say, shoot, it probably had been either six months. And then the, those vanilla beans, the flavor of that vanilla leaches out into that vodka and you have vanilla extract, which is far better than what you can buy. But the reason why you want to add that last once you take it off of the heat and the heat dissipates is because if you add it while it's hot, the alcohol will cook out. And along with the alcohol cooking out, your vanilla flavoring will go out. So you'll have nothing left. So you always wanna add that last. And those are the reasons why we're gonna add our cinnamon and our vanilla to the apple pie filling last. So I'm gonna get this other one done and we're gonna check on our squash that's beeping in the microwave and we'll be back with you. Okay, so we put our apples in here with the sugar and we added no water at all. And we turned them on low heat. And if you look in there, can you see that good, Chino? Look how much juice is in there. There is a lot of juice out of these apples. These are really juicy apples. So we're gonna let this, and turn it up a little bit, and we're actually gonna let this boil. And this is why I said we're not adding the cinnamon or the vanilla yet. Because I could add the cinnamon now but I don't want to add the vanilla because I don't want it to cook off. We're going to let this boil for a little bit until this juice in here, it's just juice, it's just like water, until it starts to get thick, and it will thicken because of the sugar. We want it to be a little thick. But we're going to let this go while we go over to the table and we start to get our butternut squash pie filling mixed up. Okay, guys, how you do this is all up to you, but what you want to do is you just want to get the squash off the skin. Some people think it's easier to take the skin off the squash. I don't like that inside of it. I just want the nice orange flesh. So I actually take a spoon and I scoop it out. I'm only looking for two cups, I think it is. I'll have to check that, but I think I'm only looking for two cups of squash anyway. So I've got way more squash here than I'm gonna need for two half and a half pies. Now if I were making two squash pies, I would need double that, of course, which is probably close to what I have here. But it works pretty easy. You wanna let it cool a little bit because right after it's done cooking, it's too hot to touch. And when I say two cups, I don't mean two cups, just like fill this up and call it good. I'm gonna run through this with a fork and I'm gonna mash it, and it has to be two cups of mashed squash. So you can see I'm calling that enough squash out of there. 
Now, of course, if times were lean and you were trying to stretch stuff, you could certainly take more of that out of there. But it makes a better pie with just the nice orange flesh of the squash. That one, I got a little bit of peeling on it. And you can feel that. You can feel when you cut into that peeling. But you can see this nice, tender, orange part of the squash pretty well just scrapes off of here. Our ends got a little dry because, you know, we cooked it in the microwave. Even though there was water in there and, and it steamed, there's still, this is what I mean. See, that's, that, and, and honestly, that's not really skin, but it's a part I don't like because it is more fibrous. So I'm taking that off of there. And I'm thinking that in a cup like this of unmashed squash, that's probably going to turn out to be about two cups. But I'm going to take that and put it, put a fork through it and mash it. Make sure I have two cups. And then we're going to mix up our pie. So I have this cup full to the top. You saw that. And I'm taking a fork, just a regular table fork like you eat with. And I'm running it through here. And a lot of people put this in a mixer. I don't see a need for that, honestly. I, I think our special guest has arrived. I think my dad is here. I think so. I don't see a need for that because a little texture is not going to hurt anything. And I'm just doing this rough to measure to see if I have two cups. And I'm going to call that two cups. And we're going to dump that in this bowl here. I hear I'm at the door. Yep, the end of the hour, here. the end of the day, the man of the decade, <laughs> the man of our life. Hello, Dad. Come on in. I'm going to go through here and mash this just a little bit more just to make sure I don't have any, have any lumps. Okay, and then... We're going to go ahead and start mixing stuff up. Okay, so in this little bowl here, I have a half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ginger, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a pinch of um, allspice, and it calls for a pinch of cloves. I put in two pinches because I like cloves. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump this in here now, and I'm going to mix that, mix that up before I add any liquid or anything else. Get that all incorporated into the squash. And you know what? You'd be amazed. As soon as you dump that in there, you're like, oh my God, it's pumpkin pie. It's, it smells yeah, it just smells like, really good. It smells just like pumpkin pie. You know, it's like suddenly it goes from smelling like squash to smelling like pumpkin pie. Now, the only other thing that goes in here is we have a can of Sweetened condensed milk, which is known as Eagle brand. A lot of people, that's probably the most popular brand out there. And I have Metal Gold because it was on sale and it's all the same. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dump this whole can of sweetened condensed milk. Not evaporated milk, not like Milnot, like we use for biscuits and gravy or everything else that we've made <laughs> with canned milk. But you can tell by looking at it, it's thick and syrupy. It's sweetened condensed milk. There's no sugar that's going into this pie except for what's in the sweetened condensed milk. Eagle brand, metal bowl, store brand, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Man, those apples are starting to smell amazing too. And then in addition to the Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk, we have two eggs. I'm going to dump these in there on top of that and use my canvas trash. Yep. And brown eggs do not taste any different than white eggs, in case anybody wonders. It just has to do with the chicken, what it lays. So we're going to give this a good stir. We're going to get it, get it mixed up a little bit and we're just going to be, and I use a fork. You can use a whisk, you can use a mixer, you can use whatever your little heart desires. But I'm pretty old school with stuff, and I'm just using a fork. I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until everything looks like it's mixed together. And I don't care if I got a couple of little chunks of squash in there because it gives it texture. And I think that's what I don't like about 
pumpkin pie is because there's no texture at all. Too much like plain custard. Yeah, but with the apples on the bottom and with the squash in it. Now, if you like that smooth texture, you are more than welcome to take this and put it in a food processor, um, run a mixer through it if you want to. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want. But it turns out awesome like this. So that's done. Now our next step is when our apples are done cooking and our juice has slightly thickened, well, we can actually do this now. We're going to take a little bit of flour, not a whole lot, and in each one of these shells, these pie shells, we're going to sprinkle a little flour in the bottom because I told you we're not adding any flour to our apple pie filling because we're cooking it. So we don't want to add flour into our pot while we're cooking it. We don't want to cook the flour into it. We want to let it get into it when we bake it. And that flour on the bottom of those pie shells with that butter, it's going to just turn out awesome. The crust is going to be excellent. So just a little sprinkling, you know, along the bottom. Now nothing else gets done until we dump our apples in and then we're going to dump our, our custard, our squash custard on top of it. We're going to put them in the oven and we're going to bake them and it's going to be phenomenal. I added our cinnamon to this while it was still cooking just to let the cinnamon kind of cook into the apples a little bit. I think that would be more how it would be when you bake an apple pie, but the vanilla we're going to add now, it's cool. It's not it's not too hot to dump in on top of that butter. Butter isn't just going to float away. We're going to, I have my half teaspoon measure from earlier when I measured out the spices for the pumpkin for the squash. So I'm going to add two of these in with our apple pie. And I like vanilla. I think it belongs in pie. And pumpkin doesn't call for it, but or squash doesn't call for it. But I'm putting it in there. So. I love it too. We grew it. Well, what do you expect? We are siblings. It's just a warm, comforting flavor. So we're going to give this a little stir. Just get it throughout our apples. Oh man, it smells amazing. Oh. Smells like the holidays in here. It does. <laughs> it does. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever y'all celebrate. Anyway, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to divide it between the two of these. And you can see our apples are cooked. And there's lots of juice in here. It didn't let it all cook off, but that's why we have the flour in here. You know, when you make apple pies, you always have flour or cornstarch. And if you're unsure about how much you're going to need in it, then by all means, add your flour while you're, after your apples are done. Add your flour to it and cook it and get it to the cons consistency of an apple pie. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to make things more difficult. It's, you know, it is what it is. You make you do whatever's going to make it easier for you. Yeah, the same same basic process as the flour on the dumplings thickening up exactly. the stock in the ham and sausage. Yeah. yeah, and you always put flour in with your apple pie filling. So we're gonna just divide these up basically mm. between the two. And you know what? You could do more apple if you wanted. But I didn't because I already have a feeling that we're going to have too much filling when it comes down to getting this pumpkin in here. Once we so, get all the squash added, yeah. Yeah, squash. I'm sorry. I keep saying pumpkin. Squash. Okay, let me lay these apples down a little bit. We can always bake it in custard cups. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you certainly wouldn't waste that because mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. So we're just... Okay, we baked these pies for 15 minutes at 4.50, I believe. Maybe it was four and a quarter. We'll put the recipe in there. Anyway, now they, they get turned down after 15 minutes to 3.50. And they've been baking for 40 minutes. About 43 minutes. I stuck them. They're looking good. We're going to pull them out of the oven. Get a shot of that, Gino. That looks scrumptious. Now is the moment of truth. And I always pray that it doesn't turn out runny. I can 
feel the apples in there. Ooh, the crust is crispy. At least the edges. Set that on the plate now and zoom in there. Nice. Oh, that turned out awesome. Okay, here we go. Oh wow, that crust is so nice and brown on the bottom. Mmm. Mmm. Crisp crust on the bottom. The whole apple squash flavors at the same time. This blows pumpkin pie away, away. By far the best holiday pie I've had yet. You guys really should try this. It's amazing. Show us a quick little, the, the bottom crust. Let's oh, see. you want to see the bottom crust? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, look how golden brown that is on the bottom. Just to perfection. Amazing. Guys, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. God bless y'all and have a happy holiday season from Through the Woods 360.